So the camping season is just around the corner and maybe you are deciding whether or not you should be doing van life. Well in today's video I'm going to be showing you five things that you must consider before you start doing van life. So if you search the hashtag van life on Instagram you're going to see over 14.3 million posts of all these beautiful destinations and it looks like everybody's living the dream. Somewhat of that is true, not everything is true. Nobody's really talking about the times where you're broken down on the side of the road, you're trying to fix your van in a car park, you're trying to find somewhere to empty your toilet. So you have to take all of this into consideration. So let's dive right into the video and we'll show you what you need to consider before you start doing van life. So the number one thing on our list to consider is what type of van you're going to be doing your adventure in. Are you somebody that wants like a high roof van so you can stand up on it? Are you somebody that wants a low roof van with a pop-up roof so you can fit under barriers and be kind of discreet? Are you somebody that wants a stealth type camper van so nobody really knows that you're sleeping inside it? Or are you someone that wants a big massive motorhome for the luxurious comfort? The type of van you pick depends on a lot of things that you can and cannot do. For example, if you have a large motorhome, it's going to be very difficult for you to find places to park because I know over in Spain, if you park your motorhome in a normal car park space, then the police will come and find you. Whereas our van, which is a Volkswagen T3, we can park anywhere we want. Nobody really says anything because it's so small, it fits into these little car park spaces and you don't have to be overhanging or taken up too. So another thing that you have to consider is, do you want to buy a van that is already converted into a camper van? or maybe you want to do the renovation yourself if you want we have a series on youtube where we convert our whole entire van into a tiny home on wheels so we'll leave this here linked up above so you can watch out that series and you can learn how to renovate your van yourself so before you go buy in your van you have to think of this long term are you going to be somebody that is going to only use it at the weekends for like a weekend trip or are you someone that's planning on living it full time and living that digital nomad lifestyle so you can wake up wherever you want all these here have to be taken into consideration before you buy the van and you don't end up with the wrong van for your adventures and then you end up having to change it somewhere down the line so always make sure you know what type of van you're going to be looking for when you start off your adventure one thing we'd highly recommend is that you buy a van that is mechanically sound so that you don't run into any problems and that leads us on to our next point which is number two and that is be prepared for any breakdowns so you have to be prepared for any sort of breakdown you're going to be doing everything in this van from living in it driving it you're going to be covering serious miles you're going to be probably taking it off road up mountains you just never know what sort of scenario you're going to be in with your van so over this space of time something is going to go wrong so you just have to be prepared for this breakdown now we highly recommend keeping a little bit of cash set aside so that in the case of an emergency and your van does break down you have enough spare cash that you can go and you can get your van fixed and you don't have to be worrying that you're going to run out of money the one thing that we highly recommend is that you have some sort of mechanical knowledge of your van so that if you do break down something simple along the road you can fix it there and then you don't have to call uh, out for an AA or a mechanic to come and fix it for you like a couple of times we have snapped belts on the road and we knew how to change them and within five minutes we were back going again and there was no problems like when we were in the Pyrenees our wipers broke we were fit to fit, fix them in the side of the road in lash and rain so just little things like that there that if you know how to fix you'll save yourself a lot of money in the long run and you don't have to call out any mechanics so this goes with knowing how to fix your van we'd highly recommend carrying a few spare parts with you just a few simple parts that you need uh, you don't have to carry everything with you just something that you could fix on the long side of the road and get you going again so for example for our case we have snapped a couple of belts so we have a couple of spare belts we have an alternator because i know the alternator give trouble in ours and we have just a few little bits and pieces that we can fix and get us going so we don't have to waste time sitting on the side of the road so if you have to fix your van on the side of the road we'd highly recommend taking a decent toolkit with you something that is going to be able to fix most problems you don't have to carry everything but something that is going to get you out of a hole and get you on the road again so always carry a little toolkit with you we have one in the back of burgers and trust me we have used it quite a bit so we know a thing or two about breaking down we have been on the road for over six months now and we have broken down quite a few times we have broken cv joints in Ackle island we have busted our oil cooler in the pyrenees our radiator started leaking our starter motor stopped we got into a crash in barcelona and i'm telling you when we carried a toolkit with us we were fit to get out of all these situations just by carrying a few simple tools so number three on our list is before you go make sure you are always prepared and have a plan on where you're going to be sleeping that night because there is nothing worse when you arrive to a park up at like 10 11 p.m when it's dark outside and you come to your park up 
and you find that there's a barrier up and you can't get in there maybe there's young ones around partying and it's really loud the car park's full so always make sure you have a plan out that morning where you're going to be parking that night to help us with this we use the app park for night where we can go and we can find different park ups all around the place and we can go and we can filter through them and we can even go and read the comments so if other van lifers had bad experience before they leave a comment so that you know that there's either like a barrier up or there's it's usually a spot where young people hang around and party you can filter through this and you can read the comments so then you don't end up going there at like 10 o'clock and you realize that this is not the right place for us we have to move on because trust me there is nothing worse than arriving a place and then you realize you have to drive another 30 minutes to your next destination in the pitch black and it's just frustrating at that time of night maybe you're the type of person that doesn't matter where you sleep you can just rock up anywhere and fall asleep but you might be that type of person that can go somewhere and then you feel a little bit uneasy so then you don't want to sleep there so it is always important to make sure you have a plan out where you're going to be sleeping that night we have learned from our mistake and we did this here at the very start of our trip and we arrived somewhere at like 10 o'clock and it just felt a bit uncomfortable and we knew that it wasn't for us so then we had to turn around and look and park for night find another place that was 35 minutes away and we had to drive in the dark to get there for around 11 p.m so it's just not what you really want to do and it just makes your day that little bit worse so always be prepared and know where you're going to be sleeping that night so number four on our list of things to consider is hygiene now this is really important when you are starting out on your van life adventure and picking the right van are you somebody that wants a shower in your van or are you going to be showering outside in a portable shower are you going to be using public showers or are you going to be someone that showers in like the nature areas of a river a lake or what sort of toilet are you going to have in your van a chemical toilet then you have to think where are you going to empty your toilet so in our van we just use a portable shower and we have a chemical toilet and luckily all around spain it's pretty simple to empty your toilet there's these little areas nearly at every petrol station where you can go and empty your black water and there's places to empty your grey water and fill up your tanks so this here is really important hygiene is really important because if you're living in your van for a couple of days and you don't have the means of having a shower then that is going to dampen down your mood and you're not going to be enjoying the experience like you should be so always have this here in consideration what sort of hygiene routines are you going to have in your van and that will make your day much much better so last but not least number five on our list is you are going to experience the highest of highs but also you're going to experience the lowest of lows now van life is full of highs but it can have those low moments as well and the lowest moment of our whole entire trip was probably when we were going to Barcelona and we got hit on the motorway totally not our falls some boy behind us lost control was on his mobile and took the front of our van it kind of ruined our whole entire trip because we spent a couple of days in hospital getting x-rays we were on the phone to insurances and it was just a lot of paperwork a lot of things to deal with and that was probably the lowest moment of our trip but the highs outweighed this lowest moment and we've experienced some of the highest highs while living van life we have parked up in some magical places all on our own we have slept beside some of the crystal clear waters with full of fish and we can just go and relax by the rivers we have slept in the Pyrenees waking up to snow and the mountains it has been one of the best experiences and we can't wait to continue our travels in 2023 so this is just an important thing to consider before you start your van life that you might see on instagram all these beautiful destinations and it looks like everybody is living that van life dream waking up in beautiful places but let me tell you there is some lows of it for example you could be waking up in a big industrial car park and it's just not those instagramable views but it's all part and part of living that van life especially if you are living in your van full time and when it comes to winter it can get dark very early at like 4 30 5 pm and it's a long evening when you're sitting in your van from that time until the next morning at eight o'clock when it gets bright so you can you can feel quite down when you're living in your van especially if you're doing this alone it's not too bad when you have company because you have somebody to talk to but if you are living on your own in a van it can get very lonely and there can be some low points on your trip but trust me for every low moment you're probably going to have 10 high moments so just bear this in mind that everything you see on instagram is not real and you are going to have some low moments but trust me the high moments are worth it so just before we finish up the video one of our subscribers were asking is like the language a barrier when you go to do van life in a different country so i know that annie sounds like she's from northern ireland so that's the starter there but annie is actually spanish so when we went to spain we had no issues at all with the language i can speak a little bit but annie is fluent in it so when we had that accident in barcelona it was perfect because annie could speak to the police and I didn't really have to do anything i just had to sign my name but yeah annie is not from northern ireland she's actually spanish the language barrier was wasn't even there for us but if you do go to another country i suggest just learning the basics and when you speak to a local and you 
you know a little bit of their language just like the simple hello please thank you that will go really far when you're trying to talk to a local there you have it guys there are five things to consider before you start out in your van life adventure if you like these style of videos drop a comment down below and we can make more of them and if you have any questions about van life either building the van where we went or what we did just drop it down in the comments and we'll be chatting to you down there so i want to give a huge shout out to everybody who has subscribed to the channel we have just reached over 1700 subscribers which is crazy for the pair of us because we start out in this journey which absolutely no following at all and to think that we're at 1700 right now is pretty crazy thanks everybody who subscribed to the channel there will be more videos coming in 2023 where we explore more of europe so as always thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video bye